Hello folks and welcome, Soren OS, XFCE Desktop. Today I'm going to talk about GRSync, the graphical version of RSync. RSync is used in a lot of places and I use it pretty heavily myself to uh, sync up files and folders. I'm going to use RSync, or GRSync today as uh, the graphical version of RSync, GRSync to sync up uh, folders, personal folders to uh, USB storage devices like a stick or a USB hard drive. I'll give you some tips along the way and um, and then I'm going to talk about uh, in future videos you see these little guys here these icons are actually launchers that go on also use rsync with multiple folders to multiple destinations grsync is normally one source to one destination so that's what I'm going to talk about today 1920 by 1080 is what I'm filming in today this is extremely large currently I enlarged the font just to start off this video just to point out what I'm using for an OS and desktop and screen resolution so you may need to um, go over to your YouTube player hit the gear symbol and adjust your screen resolution accordingly because this is about to get smaller none of my videos are less than two minutes but they all have timelines and chapters I encourage that you subscribe read my about section and investigate the community tab to do some keyword searches on my 100 plus videos. Now I'm going to use Alt F4. Things will get smaller. Don't forget about that little gearbox on your player. All right, so uh, I'm going to talk about going to the Blue Suitcase software store and uh, installing GRSync first. Once you get GRSync installed, GRSync is graphical version of RSync. And I do encourage that you look this up on the internet. So it's going to be using RSync for all of its commands. G means the graphical version, or that's what GRSync is. And for the most part, you're dealing with one source to one destination, and that's sufficient with a lot of users. But I'm going to actually clear the fields and let you see what it normally looks like. These are the defaults. Basic options should work for just about everybody. You do have extra and advanced options also. If you make any changes, my suggestion is to grab the screenshot tool and do an active window screenshot before you make changes. And also read the information on the internet regarding GRSync. Okay? And in my future videos, I'm going to show you an example of this one. This one here is actually a launcher that goes to a script, and that script uses RSync that actually um, will sync up multiple folders, actually to multiple devices. I'll give you a quick taste of that at the end of the video. But that will be my next video regarding rsync. And these are actually functional right now. But I'm going to use grsync as the first video, this one here today. So let me open up my file manager and point out what I'm using today. Frank is our fictitious name. He, Frank is just a made up name and he has some files that he would like to, um, well, make backups. I have USB 1 and USB 2. So I'm going to create two windows so I can show you what I'm working with. But I'm going to talk about first formatting your storage devices, USB storage devices. There are many tools you can use. One is already built in. It's called GNOME Disk Utility. If you format these with uh, FAT32, File Allocation Table 32, you're going to be able to use this not only in Zorin but also Microsoft Windows and Macs. You can choose other methods if you like or other file file formats but uh, basically USB 1 on the top USB 2 on the bottom when you are naming your devices may I make a suggestion of not putting spaces in the names and keep the name short especially if you're going to use scripts in the future and that's what I use USB 1 and 2 suffice for, for me these again are formatted with FAT32 USB 1 is an actual solid state drive connected to a USB cable the USB 2 is a USB 2 stick in other words slower <laughs> but that one is only uh, 14 gigabytes or roughly so anyways this would be the faster of the two all right let's go back to gr sync here now let me walk through the menus i already talked about the basic advanced and extra options that is your choice but in most cases you can just leave the defaults under file you have browse source that means what are you going to copy browse destination what are you going to copy it to that's the same thing as clicking source and destination. You can also switch the two. Be careful with that one. Simulation is exactly what it says. And you can click the blue symbol and it does the same thing. 
Also the keyboard equivalent is Alt S. Execute or run. Alt E is the same thing as clicking those two gears right here. And in some distributions, it'll be an arrow looking key. Our sync command line, if I don't have anything selected in these two boxes, this is what the R sync command line looks like. Keep in mind, GR sync, the magic is done with R sync. Remote sync is what R sync stands for. So this one is using the option of dash R. Um, I'll show you the quick script for this one here. It uses a dash A, for instance. But the dash R dash T dash V double dash progress dash S mouthful is what it uses here. If I populate this with source and destination, this will change slightly. So let's pick something from Frank's home folder, maybe pictures. And we're going to send that to a destination. Pick the two. I'll pick the USB one. It's a little faster. Now I have source and destination selected. And the rsync command line now looks like that. You don't have to remember this. I'm just pointing it out to you. The rsync statements are the same. The only thing it changed is it added the forward slash frank pictures for my source. And for the destination, it's forward slash media frank USB one, just like it states right here. It's just missing the extra forward slash, which I don't really, I use that sometimes and I, sometimes I don't use it. But in either case, I just wanted to let you see what the actual statement looks like. Don't have to remember this at all. Under preferences, you've got some options. Again, screenshot if you want to change some things is what I recommend until you get used to this interface. Under sessions, you have add, delete, import, and export. What's a session? Well, source and destination can become a new name for your session. Give it a name. That's your source and destination. You can create as many of these as you want. I don't use them personally but you can create new sessions and delete current session. You can do the same thing here. This is your dry run, providing you have something selected. It gives you a simulation. It didn't do anything. And then the actual run is right here. So now I'm going to actually sync up pictures to USB one. And however big that folder is, is however long it's going to take and however fast your device is. This again is a solid state hard drive connected to a USB 3 cable. This is a USB 2 stick. So let me actually sync up the same folder to the other device, USB 2 in this case, and do the same thing. It's slightly slower. Okay, I didn't have a lot of things in my pictures folder. Let me open up Frank's pictures folder and let you see what's in there. It's got a hello world and a couple of photos and a text file. It's not much in there really. What makes rsync faster the second time around, it doesn't matter if you're using a regular rsync with script files or grsync, it, it's the same speed, is uh, once the folder has been created on the target device, it makes things faster. It'll also just verify source to destination to make sure it's got all the files that it needs. So if I rerun this, it doesn't matter to which device because if they both contain pictures, then it's a moot point, but I'm going to hit the run key and it'll say completed immediately. It actually went and verified though. So let me use the lower screen to go into Frank's home folder and talk about what's in here. So basically it verified that everything in here was the same as here. So these could be files also. If they didn't change, it didn't have to replicate anything. It just verifies to make sure you got everything if it finds one of these has been altered, it syncs it up. Let me give you another example of a different folder. So we'll switch this back and we'll pick another folder. I will open up, um, I'll do music. And let me see what's in music before I do that. Let me get rid of some of these folders because they're just empty. These actually contain music. Okay, so it's really just three folders. All right, let's pick music. And we're going to go to USB one on this. Sorry, one. So source this music to USB one. So USB one is up here and I'm going to sync it. And we'll just stick on that for a second. So I'll wait till it finishes. Close the box, 
and rerun that and it won't do anything other than verify. So right now it says stopped. But it actually did go and check to see if there was any changes after I performed this because it has no idea if this is a week from now or two minutes from now. But if I did put something in the music folder, which I'm about to do, I'll stick another folder. I just call it Hello World. And I'll walk over to USB 1 and open up the music folder and then I'm going to rerun this. And all it's going to do is it's not going to re-replicate these three folders with the music. It's only going to replicate this folder over to here. It'll be very quick. It's finished. That's what makes rsync faster the second time around because it's, it doesn't have to recreate all of these folders and subfolders and, fold and files. It just verifies that they are the same. There's no changes were made on these folders, hence they're the same. It knows that by the actual properties of the folders and files. That's what makes rsync very fast the second time around. One source, one destination is what grsync is normally used for. Again, you can just keep the defaults. Why wouldn't you want to sync your home folder? Well, there's two reasons that I would say that's ill-advised. Number one is you need sufficient amount of space on whatever device you're syncing your home folder to. Number two, you may not be aware there's some hidden files and folders in here that you probably don't need in 99% of the cases, unless you're a developer and you want every bit and byte. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit Control H in Frank's home folder and let you see what's in here. Everything that starts with a dot is a hidden something. That's a hidden cache folder. It has subfolders and some of them even have other subfolders. The config folder, hidden folder, also has other subfolders. That's what makes this sync up a lot larger. This also has other files that are hidden. They have a dot in front of them. You normally don't see those. When you're using rsync or grsync to sync up your home folder, it is syncing up everything in here. Every bit and piece of information, which you know, in normal conditions, 99% of the time don't need. Control H turns off your hidden files and folders. That is why I say that's ill-advised. Copy the stuff that you need. In Frank's case, maybe their documents, music, his stuff, pictures maybe, whatever is important to you. Probably not your hidden files and folders in 99% of the cases. You can certainly do that. Just be prepared to wait a long time and have sufficient amount of storage space to do that with because your backup will be large. If you've been running Zorin for a long time, I'll give you an example, this cache folder will be huge. Okay, under normal conditions. So a lot of stuff goes in this folder. All right, I think I've hammered that point. So my recommendation is just do your personal folders and whatever is important to you. If you need more than one folder at a time, then you probably want to switch to scripts. And now might be a good time, since I think I've hammered this point pretty large, uh, to talk about this briefly for my next video. These are functional icons. They're just launchers to script files. Those scripts are located in Frank's script folder. The backup all is this one right here. This my stuff and my stuff are different scripts. This is a typical script that has multiple folders. All I do is double click on that and it's going to perform all of these rsyncs to, to two different devices here and multiple different, different kind of folders. And the commands are slightly different from what you saw in the other rsync uh, from grsync. I'll talk about all that on my next video when I do produce that one. But for right now, I think this grsync is sufficient for a lot of folks. And I'll say thank you for watching.